I've got another plan. Tom Hanks is cast away next on BBC One. And don't forget, EastEnders every night this week, continuing tomorrow at 7.30 here on BBC One Scotland. The devil looked like this. I think you're hot. Maybe you have no idea. Wouldn't you be tempted? I would give you seven wishes to use as you see fit. Elizabeth Hurley. Maybe a quick spanky is it order. And Brendan Fraser. Mm. Bid Dazzle, Friday at 10.20 on BBC One. Another big movie premiere now on BBC One Scotland. If you've always secretly longed for a quiet Christmas away from it all, be careful what you wish for. Tom Hanks and Helen Hunt star in Castaway. Kevin Bacon is the Chicago teenager bringing rock and roll to a repressed town in 20 minutes. Here on BBC One Scotland, Footloose is after the news. And you can get all of the latest Christmas movie news on the new digital information service from BBC I, as well as finding out what's on at your local cinema. Just press red on your digital remote anytime. Hogmanay on BBC One Scotland. A celebration of a hundred years at the King's Theatre. You're one in a million. So is your chances. Football funnies with only an excuse. We'll look at that one there. The gift of the gab with chewing the fat. We have a lot of people to see. No way after you've seen me. And midnight merriment with Hogmanay Live. Hogmanay on BBC One Scotland. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Proof of this exists in one of the most remarkable stories ever told. In a way, he teaches me not to worry about what I think might be wrong with me. A story of immense surgical skill. I continually say to myself, did you do the right thing? And the finest example of what love can do. Thank you very much. I'm very proud of you. The Boy David Story, Friday at quarter to three on BBC One Scotland. I am a beautiful person. I really am. The news now on BBC One Scotland with Darren Jordan. An urgent appeal tonight for more aid to help Iran's earthquake victims. Up to 30,000 people are now thought to have died, including a British man. Hunting for a police killer, officers name a suspect they're keen to question. Doctors attack government plans for a crackdown on so-called health tourists. And tributes pour in for Bob Monkhouse, who died today at the age of 75.
Good evening. The United Nations tonight issued an urgent plea for aid to help the victims of Iran's devastating earthquake. A short while ago, a meeting of Gulf states said it would give $400 million. As many as 30,000 people are now thought to have died in Friday's quake in the historic city of Bam. One of them was Gavin Sexton from Southampton, a 36-year-old firefighter who was on a Around the World tour. From Bam in southern Iraq, David Loyne reports. There are two huge operations running late into the night now in southeast Iran. At the airport, international relief pours in to preserve the lives of survivors. And in the graveyard, there are mass funerals on an industrial scale. The bodies are bulldozed under the same fine sand which made the bricks of the houses which killed them. <laughs> the sound of grief fills every corner of Bam, but nowhere more than the graveyard. She cries, how can the grave accept this girl, the lament of a mother, as she angrily throws her daughter's photo down? The sheer physical damage here is awesome. The loss of life, now confirmed in the tens of thousands, is mind-numbing. But what is most striking is the shock of those who survive. Many walk the streets of Bam in a daze. Men like Ali Sada Hussein, who mourns the loss of his wife and four children. The only British casualty of the Bam earthquake, Gavin Sexton, was staying here. The former fire officer was killed immediately. The owner of the guest house says that hardly anyone in his street survived the earthquake. I used to have a lot of neighbours, so many relatives. Yesterday I could manage to walk for a while to see if I could see anybody, but believe me, I could not see even one. I could not see even one. Nobody that you knew left alive in the street? Nobody, you know. Some of the specialist search teams who arrived first are leaving Iran earlier than they planned after finding no one alive. We're here to, to save lives, to, to take alive bodies, alive people out, and we only saw dead people. The unusual public appearance here of Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, and Iran's willingness to accept international aid show the gravity of the humanitarian crisis. Even where houses are not too badly damaged, the survivors live...